of the Nigerian business community await the full interpretation of last week's court judgment, which saddled Vice President Goodluck Jonathan with the responsibility of an acting president. There were fears that some sectors of the economy may have lost their bearings as a result of the confusion created by the president's absence. For a look at the pressure this is placing on business, we are joined by Opiemi Agbaje, CEO of Resource and Trust. Opiemi, thank you so much for joining us. First, let's let's take a look at what the sentiments are like from the business community, considering uh, last week's court judgment, which has saddled Vice President Jonathan Goodluck uh, with the responsibility of acting president. We're hearing reports that there are fears with some sectors that the economy may have lost its bearing. What's your take on it? Well, clearly, um, investor confidence, consumer confidence, the whole sentiment in the economy is... is um, it's almost in suspended animation. Uh, there are many economic issues outstanding, stalled in effect with the president's absence. One is the amnesty, which is about probably the only achievement the regime recorded in 2009. Um, it's um, the amnesty in the Niger Delta, which has allowed oil production to begin to rise up again, which has restored some peace in the region. It's threatened. We've seen one or two kidnappings already. There's fear that that could unravel if the situation is not quickly managed. Are you expecting the that the gains that were made with the amnesty programs to be reversed, though? Oh, certainly. Um, um, essentially, since for the past three months now, nothing has happened. Um, the, the militants accepted the amnesty, um, and then we were supposed to go into a post-amnesty phase in which certain actions were supposed to be taken. I think... Much of that is effectively stalled with the absence of the president. Let's look um, at the aviation the industry, for example. The bailout of the aviation mm. industry, it was battling last year, and, and the industry went to the FG looking for a bailout. What is being done in the interim? Well, nothing essentially has been done with that. Um, again, you might attribute that to the fact that um, everybody is in post mode in, in the government. I, I see only essential activities appear to be carried on. Um, and, and that includes the aviation sector that you spoke about. There's a petroleum industry bill that is before the National Assembly that was supposed to oversee a restructuring of the industry. Uh, there are renewal of oil blocks for the majors, which has expired. Uh, and essentially, they need the president's assent to, to finalize those transactions. Um, um, even the 2010 budget. Opie, um, I mean, why can't they just put it through Parliament, though, in the meantime? Well, the way the legislature works, and I think it's the same everywhere else, you need someone from the executive, you need a, a, a President Obama to drive his health care agenda. But we've got Parliament. a vice president somebody. in the country, Opie, Oh, well, well, what we do know is that the vice president has acted extremely tentatively, he, for, with some reason, argues that he has not been bestowed with the status of an acting president. We now have the judgment, which is uh, the court judgment, which is extremely ambiguous. Essentially, in the view of many, the, the court judgment just affirms the status quo, which is that the president, the vice president, is not an acting president. He's, a, he's in effect, a deputy president, but he doesn't have the substantive constitutional authority to act as president. Except the, that is transmitted to him by the president. The, the oil situation that you've just mentioned, are investors whose oil mining licenses are due for renewal, are they concerned terribly? I'm sure they are. We had reports in December that Shell was, was considering um, doing things with its licenses. Um, we have the uncertainty, we have the offers, the strong lobby by the Chinese to enter into the sector, all that effectively stalled. We ha even have the downstream de sector deregulation, um, which has resulted in fuel queues all over Nigeria, uh, because essentially it looks like you have a policy that is in, in the process of being announced, but that has been stalled with the absence of, 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 of um, with anybody ready to take political responsibility for a situation such as oil sector deregulation. Now, now when we have the financial sector. Now, when you say that the country is in pose uh, mode, isn't it of concern to the business community that nothing's being done? At what point will they take it up and be terribly concerned about it? 
The, the business community is concerned. Evidently, um, any business person you speak to is, is um, a bit uh, pessimistic about the outlook for 2010. Uh, they're worried about the political risk and the country risk, which appears to be rising. We're, we're worried in the business community about the uncertainty that presidential health and succession, and the, even the normal electoral cycle on its own raises blood pressures here. Yeah. But it's worsened by these issues around the, the president. Yeah, well, OP, so, just yeah, before we go, it, what is the best case scenario for the business community right now? What business would like to see is, is, a, is, a, is a seamless... Uh, and, a, and, a, and a constitutional resolution of the uncertainty. Uh, as you know, anywhere in the markets, the markets like to know what comes next. If uh, the president is going to return to work, let him return to work tomorrow. If he was unable to do so, let somebody have the authority to act. Let the governance be seen to be stable and to be continuous. That would be good for the markets and for investors. In